Hello. So in one of my last videos before Christmas, I talked about um, ways to make the script take a break to pause for script, but it's running at the moment. And I did mention in that video that you can use it for if you were to say fade out the game and make a particular thing happen. I think I mentioned that. Anyway, I'm going to demonstrate in this video how to apply a fade effect to how to make the screen fade to black. Then while the screen is black, we could maybe do something like disable a particular object that we maybe want to have hidden. And uh, then to bring the screen back up again and allow the player to move around. So it's a little bit like in the Gilded Grasshopper quest when the player digs up the grave. So instead of you actually see the player dig up the grave, the screen fades to black. We hear like a digging sound and then when it comes back up, the grave is just um, open. So first thing we're going to want to do is I'm going to create a quest to handle uh, this process. Right click, new, I'm going to call it tutorial underscore fade quest, as long as it's got a unique ID that's fine. Um, I'm not going to bother with any of these priorities, we're going to leave start game enabled and run once and we're going to need to click OK to get all that stuff to appear. Here's tutorial fade quest. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a script over here which is just going to be an extremely basic script. This is just going to be to handle disabling the player's controls when they activate the object. So the, the, um, the player where they can't just run around while the screen's fading to black. So I'm just going to call it tutorial underscore fade script. Okay. Cancel that because we actually don't need any properties. We just need to right click, edit source. And under here, I'm going to create an input enable layer. So I'm going to write input enable layer. Just call it my layer. And now I'm going to create the function to block the player's controls. So we could do this pretty easily by just going, give it any name we want, but I'm just going to call it block player controls because that makes sense. Then my layer equals input enable layer dot create my layer dot disable player controls like that and function and then we can do a quick other function to unblock the player controls my layer dot delete end function and if I've not made any mistake oh yeah nice I usually make some kind of typo so that is all we need to type in and that's the entirety of this script that's literally all we need to do so i'm just going to okay out of this i'm going to save next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to return in here and we're going to create a stage and now this is where we're going to be doing the majority of the stuff that's actually related to the content of this tutorial which is creating the fade and applying the appropriate timers so i'm just going to right click new Set to create, give it an ID of 5, right click, new in here. And this is where we're going to be doing the majority of uh, the scripting we're we'll doing in here. So, actually before we do this, I'm going to create the trigger that is going to start the fade from happening because I'm going to need to reference that in my trigger boxes. So there's lots of different ways you could do this. You could do this while walking into a trigger. You could do this when activating a particular object. So I'm going to show how to create a little activator that we can just press on and that will um, make everything fade out. So I'm just going to go to the activator section and I'm going to right click new and we're just going to create um, a unique activator. So I'm going to call it tutorial fade activator as long as that's a unique ID. This name, this is what the player is going to see when they look at it. So I thought maybe I'd just use this barrel or something like that. Barrel. And then what we can do is we can actually, instead of saying activate, we can get it to say something else. So I could just write um, destroy there. So now when my player looks at this trigger, they're going to see destroy barrel appear. Okay. Save. And... I just need to jump back into it again because we can now add a script, which we couldn't before, so we had to OK out of it to add a script. So literally all I'm going to do is use um, a default ref on activate uh, trigger. So I'm going to go for my quest 
and we're going to find the quest that we made before, which was called Tutorial Fade Quest. And stage five is the stage at which it's going to be it's going to uh, begin to fade out. So that's literally all we need to do is. Now when the player activates this, they'll see the option to destroy the barrel, and when they do, they'll set stage 5. But at the moment, that isn't doing anything, and also this object doesn't exist. So I'm going to need to make sure that markers are enabled by pressing M on my keyboard, that's the default. And click and drag this tutorial activator in. It's kind of big, so if I press 2, I'm going to get these resizing arrows. You might want to leave it. If you're doing what I'm doing and stretching a thing over an object, you might want to make it bigger than the object because if you don't do that, then um, sometimes it can like clip inside the objects. Like if this barrel's collision area is larger than the barrel, the player won't actually be able to activate this. It'll be, you know, stuck inside the barrel. So we want to have it just floating there. But at the moment, the player actually can't activate this. So I have to double click in this activator. And bring up this uh, menu. This should all be filled in by default because that's inherited from a parent object, so we don't need to worry about that. What we do need to do is go into this primitive uh, tab and just check this player activation thing because otherwise it's going to be trying to go into an actor zone by default, which means it's going to be triggered when actors go inside it. What we want is for player activation. So now that is what is going to determine if a player can see it when they hover over it. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to see it, which means they're not going to be able to activate it which means we're not going to be able to make any progress in our uh, tutorial. So now we're going to dive back into this and I'm just going to create a, create a property in here and create a reference to our barrel because I'm going to want to get rid of that activator at some point because we don't want the player to just be endlessly act able to activate it. We just want it to happen once. So I'm just going to call it barrel activator like that. And this isn't going to fill in because I didn't give it a name uh, in the game. So I'm just going to have to double click, pick reference in render window. And I'm going to click that, like that, tutorial fade activator. And I'm also going to create a reference to the barrel, which will make it a persistent reference. But I don't think that one persistent reference is actually that big of a big deal. Object reference, and I'm just going to create barrel because we're going to be getting rid of a barrel. Because the player in this example is destroying the barrel. The tutorial is mainly about the fade, but I, I kind of wanted to at least have it do something during the fade. So first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to disable the barrel. So what does I call it? Barrel activator dot disable. So now we're not just going to be able to endlessly activate the barrel. And we're going to click this drop down and fill this KMY quest with our script that we made before. So now we can just write to call the function to block the player controls. We can just write KMY quest dot. What do we call the function? I think we called it block player controls. Open brackets, close brackets. And now we're going to want to do the actual fading. So this is what the, the, the bulk of the tutorial is going to actually be about. It's teaching you to apply this fade effect. So we're going to use game dot fade out game. And there's a whole bunch of parameters we have to put in here. So first of all, I'm going to write true. And this determines whether we're fading in or fading out. So if it's true, we're fading out. If it's false, we're fading back in. Second thing we're going to want to put is the colour. So we're going to either want it to fade black or white. That's for two that it supports. And if it's true, we're fading to black. If it's false, we're fading to white. Second parameter, how long do we want to wait before the fade begins? We don't want to wait at all in this example. So I'm going to do 0.0. .0. Next, we've got to decide how long do we want the fade to take. So again, this could be subjective. So if you were wanting like a sound to play during the fade, you could make the fade like last the same amount of time as the sound. If there's something that's happening in the background, like an actor is playing out a scene, make it last as long as that. But I'm just going to go two seconds, which should be fine. And finally, do we want the fade to hang around after we've um, applied it? In this example, we actually do. Because we want it to fade to black, then while it's black, we want something to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, make the game wait a little while before we move on to the next thing. So I'm just going to write utility.wait, which was the command we used in the previous tutorial to make our script wait. 
and I guess any amount of time will do uh, 2.5 seconds. Compile. And next I'm going to move on to be another stage. So I'm just going to do set stage 10. Compile. So what's going to happen now is we haven't actually created the stage 10, but I'm just creating a separate stage to handle my fade in. I think it just keeps it a little bit uh, neater. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to handle my fade in and I'm going to get rid of my barrel. So now what we're seeing is the player can't move and the screen is completely black. So I'm going to go barrel dot disable. Compile. So while the screen is black, the barrel will be going away. Then we're going to begin the process of fading the player back in. So we're basically going to have to do the opposite of what we did last time. So we're going to go game dot um, fade game out. And so we're going to want it to be true because we're fading the player back in. Okay, so fairly big mistake here. Um, I'd written true here. We wanted to write false, not true. So because I'd written true, it meant we were fading the game out again. We actually want to write false to ensure that the game uh, fades in. So hopefully that is uh, should now work properly. True, we're fading from black. We don't want it to take any time at all to wait. Uh, let's make it take the same amount of time. And this time, this parameter for whether we want it to stay or go, it actually defaults to false. So we can just leave that blank. We don't actually need to write in false. But if we want to write in false, we could, because we're just we're getting rid of the fade. Next, we're fading back in. We're getting rid of it. We don't want it to. It kind of wouldn't make sense if it hung around. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to make the player wait again. Utility dot wait. 2.5 because what we want to do is we don't want the player to be able to run around just yet so we're just waiting a little longer and then we're going to um, re-enable the player controls so we're going to do the same thing KMY can quest and we're going to write KMY quest dot oh, what's that right unblock player controls no, nope, that's clearly not what I called it. Something's failed. Oh, fade game out. That's not right. Oh, I've done it the wrong way. It's not called fade game out. That's my fault. It's actually called fade out game. There we go. So I did call it on block play controls. That was a mistake. I'd written fade game out up here instead of fade out game. And then we unblock the player controls. Okay. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just quickly run through everything that's happening in this tutorial to try and explain it. And then I'll demonstrate it working. So what's going to happen is a player is going to activate this. And when they activate this barrel, we're going to be setting stage 5 of tutorial fade quest. Which is going to disable the activator so we can't just keep spamming it. It's going to block the player controls. It's going to run a two second fade out. We're going to have to wait two and a half seconds, so just slightly longer than the fade. And then we move on to the next stage. While the screen is black, the barrel is disabled. Then the game will fade back in, because we've done the uh, opposite way around, for two and a half seconds. The player's going to have to wait. Actually, we did it two seconds last time. So let's make it two seconds. Uh, the player's going to wait again, just slightly longer than the fade. Because we don't want the player to be moving around during the fade. And then we're going to unblock the player controls. And that is basically all it is. There's not definitely much more to it than that. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to jump into the game and demonstrate that working. Okay, so we are in the game world. And we should see our barrel that can be destroyed. Yep, destroy. So when I activate this, we're going to fade to black and we won't be able to move. Yep, can't move. So while it's black, oh, there we go. Only whole thing only took a few seconds, and it's gone. Um, you can make it if you want it to hold up the black. Um, you can always make it wait again before the fade starts. So I um, I didn't do that. I just had it um, fade out and immediately start fading in. But um, that's basically it. That's how it works. Anyway, hopefully that was clear. Hopefully that's useful. Uh, thank you for watching, and goodbye.